Have you ever wondered what system hacking in cybersecurity really means? Well, let's unravel that together. System hacking is the methodical process of exploiting weaknesses in a computer system, a network, or an application. Intriguing, isn't it? It's like a game of chess, where the hacker is constantly probing for vulnerabilities, the weak spots of the opponent, to make their move. But uh, before you get the wrong idea, hacking isn't always the bad guy's game. There's a thing called ethical hacking, where the good guys, the cybersecurity professionals, hack systems too. They do this to find and fix the vulnerabilities before the bad guys can exploit them. It's a crucial part of maintaining robust cybersecurity. So system hacking, whether by the villains or the heroes, is a fascinating world of strategy, skill, and constant evolution. Stay tuned as we delve into the stages of system hacking. The first step in system hacking is called reconnaissance. Now you might be wondering, what exactly does reconnaissance mean? Well, in the context of hacking, reconnaissance is somewhat akin to a detective's groundwork. It's all about gathering preliminary data or intelligence on your target. And no, we're not talking about spying or anything quite so dramatic. Reconnaissance is about understanding your target system, about gathering as much information as you can to help you formulate your attack plan. It's like the blueprint of a building you're about to enter. You wouldn't wander in blind, would you? No, you would want to know the layout, the exits, the security measures in place. The same principle applies here. During reconnaissance, a hacker may gather information on things like the target's IP address, domain details, and network services. They might use methods such as network footprinting, which is essentially mapping the network of the target, or DNS interrogation, which involves extracting information about the target's DNS servers. But it's not just technical data that's gathered. A hacker might also look at information that's publicly available or open source. This could include anything from social media posts to company reports, anything that might give them a better understanding of their target. So why is reconnaissance so important? Well, the more you know about your target, the more effectively you can attack. It's about finding the weak points, the vulnerabilities. Without this crucial first step, any subsequent attack is likely to be less effective or even fail entirely. In essence, reconnaissance is the foundation of system hacking. It sets the stage for all the steps that follow. It's about knowing your target inside out and using that knowledge to your advantage. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. While understanding these steps can help in building secure systems, misuse of such knowledge can have serious repercussions. With sufficient information gathered, we move to the next stage, scanning. After reconnaissance comes the scanning phase. This is the moment when all the sleuthing and information gathering from the reconnaissance phase is put into action. The scanning phase is essentially the hacker's opportunity to take a magnifying glass to the system, scrutinizing it for any potential weaknesses or loopholes. During this phase, the hacker, armed with the knowledge gained during reconnaissance, meticulously examines the target system. They use a variety of tools and techniques to probe the system, seeking out any vulnerabilities that might exist. This could be anything from open ports, unsecured network connections, outdated software, or even poorly configured firewalls. Anything that could potentially provide them with a way in. Now, it may be easy to think of this as a malicious act, but it's important to remember that not all scanning is done with harmful intent. In fact, many cybersecurity professionals conduct what's known as ethical hacking. This involves using the same techniques that a malicious hacker might use, but with the goal of identifying and patching vulnerabilities before they can be exploited. Essentially, they're using the hacker's tools against them. Scanning can be a time-consuming process requiring patience and a keen eye for detail. It's not just about finding a vulnerability, it's about finding the right vulnerability. The kind of vulnerability that can provide the hacker with the level of access they need to achieve their goals. In the hands of a skilled hacker, the scanning phase can reveal a wealth of information about the target system. Information that can be used to plan and execute a successful attack. But it's also a phase that leaves traces, digital footprints that can alert cybersecurity professionals to the hacker's presence if they're not careful. So, what happens after a potential weakness is found? Well, it's not quite as simple as just waltzing in. The hacker needs to be sure that the vulnerability can be exploited and that exploiting it won't alert any security measures in place. 
and that's where the next phase comes in. Once a potential weakness is found, it's time for the third stage, gaining access. The third stage in system hacking is known as gaining access. This is where the rubber meets the road, the proverbial moment of truth in the hacking process. After the careful and meticulous work of reconnaissance and scanning, the hacker now has enough information and has identified potential weaknesses to actually infiltrate the system. Imagine a thief. He's done his homework, he's watched the house, noted the comings and goings, found out when it's empty and identified a weak window latch. Now, he's ready to break in. The gaining access stage in hacking is remarkably similar. The hacker, armed with the knowledge of system vulnerabilities, proceeds to exploit them. This is where the most damage can occur, because once inside the system, the hacker has access to sensitive information, control over system functionalities, and even the ability to disrupt or shut down operations entirely. It's akin to the thief not only stealing valuables, but also having the power to turn off your electricity or lock you out of your own home. Exploiting these vulnerabilities to gain access can be achieved in a number of ways. It could be as simple as guessing a weak password or as complex as launching a sophisticated attack to exploit a software vulnerability. It could involve social engineering techniques where the hacker manipulates individuals into revealing confidential information or performing actions that compromise security. It's important to note that gaining access doesn't always mean the hacker is now free to wreak havoc. Many systems have multiple layers of security, so gaining access might just be the first step in navigating a labyrinth of defenses. Think of it as the thief getting past the weak window latch only to find a secondary security system inside. But regardless of the complexities and obstacles, this stage is all about breaching defences, exploiting vulnerabilities and infiltrating the system. It's where the hacker moves from observer to infiltrator, from passive collector of information to active disruptor. Once access is gained, the next stage is to maintain that access. But we'll delve into that in the next part of our discussion on system hacking. Stay tuned. Maintaining access is the fourth stage in system hacking. It's here we delve into the realm of stealth and cunning. This stage is all about ensuring that the hacker can continue to access the system, often without detection. Imagine, if you will, a cat burglar who's not only gained entry into a vault, but now wants to ensure they can return to it at their leisure, undetected and unhindered. Now, how is this accomplished in the world of cybersecurity? The answer lies in installing backdoors into the system. Think of these backdoors as secret entrances, hidden from the view that provide unrestricted access to the hacker. These can take many forms, ranging from Trojans, rootkits, to even malicious software updates. Remember, the key here is subtlety. The hacker must prevent their backdoor from being discovered, which means it should not disrupt normal system operations. This is why such backdoors are often disguised as legitimate system processes or files hiding in plain sight. However, the creation of a backdoor is not a one-size-fits-all scenario. Each system is unique and the hacker must adapt their strategies accordingly. They have to meticulously study the system's architecture, its vulnerabilities, and the habits of its users to devise the most effective approach. It's a game of patience and precision, a delicate balance between maintaining access and avoiding detection. With continued access guaranteed, the final stage is clearing tracks. The final stage in system hacking is called clearing tracks. This is where our hacker becomes somewhat of a cleaning professional, sweeping away any digital dust or fingerprints they may have left behind. The goal here is to make it appear as if they were never there. Clearing tracks is essentially about removing every trace of the hacker's presence from the infiltrated system. This includes wiping out log files, erasing history records, and even deleting any tools or software they may have used during the hacking process. The reason behind this meticulous cleanup operation, it's twofold. Firstly, it's about avoiding detection. The longer a hacker can remain undetected in a system, the more time they have to accomplish their goals, whether that's stealing sensitive data or causing disruption. Secondly, it's about preserving their methods. If a hacker's techniques are discovered, it can lead to the development of countermeasures that make future attacks using the same methods less likely to succeed. By clearing their tracks, hackers aim to keep their strategies under wraps, allowing them to strike again undetected. It's a game of digital cat and mouse where the hacker is always trying to stay one step ahead of the system's defenses. 
And while this might sound like a plot from a Hollywood blockbuster, it's a very real part of the world of cybersecurity. And that, my friends, are the five stages of system hacking. Let's take a moment to recap what we've learned about system hacking. We started with reconnaissance, the initial stage where hackers gather as much information as possible about their target system. This is the foundation upon which all subsequent steps are built. Next, we dove into scanning, a phase where hackers identify potential vulnerabilities in the system using a variety of tools. This step is like finding the weakest link in the chain. Then we explored gaining access, where hackers exploit the discovered vulnerabilities to infiltrate the system. This is where the breach actually occurs. We then moved on to maintaining access, which is all about the hacker ensuring they can continue to access the system, often undetected. Finally, we discussed clearing tracks. Here, hackers cover their digital footprints to avoid detection and to ensure their unauthorized access remains uninterrupted. Understanding these stages is pivotal. Whether you're executing a penetration test or fortifying your system against hackers, remember, knowledge is power. Stay informed, stay secure.